Bayonetta is the type of game that punches you in the face and you're just like, what the hell? This is an amazing experience. I played through Bayonetta one and two some years ago. I just ate a pizza and I'm ready to listen to the greatest Jubilee. I don't know if I remember this. Let's go. major <laughs> that's a big shift there's no place for me to stop so i just let it roll for two minutes and 38 seconds look here's the deal this song makes my little classical music loving heart light up because it is the evolution of classical music we are seeing it on display here it's a choral hymn that you would hear in a church intentionally written that way because well i don't remember the context of bayonetta at all but there is obviously and i'd be a fool not to say it that there is obviously a liturgical religious quality to this music the way that we are so wait 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 isn't bayonetta isn't she part of the underworld and she actually fights angels and heaven's gates and all that other stuff so maybe in that sense because this is the final boss theme the greatest jubilee obviously there's like this demonic sound quality it's unmet expectations whenever we hear religion just music we think oh we're in church we are in a place of worship and not in bayonetta we're not you know like this is that's the thing it like takes something that we know it's got organ chorus soprano soloist and then also the melodic like da, 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 da. that that sounds like something you would hear around Christmas time, a big event in the liturgical calendar, which, I, listen, I've sung in so many church choirs. There's a style and a process and like a structure to liturgical music that this fits under. And it reminds me a lot of oratorio music and oratorio is typically Handel and Bach. And all of these are stories relating to Christ or relating to liturgical events. Judas Maccabeus is all about Judas Maccabeus handles the Messiah is all about the Messiah. There are many different iterations of these things, the Bach St. Matthew Passion. I think it's interesting when we have experiences like this one, where we're listening to this cacophony of what we would perceive as like 
holy music, but instead this is an enemy and we are fighting against the heavens and against angels and archangels. And I find the whole flipping it on its script really interesting, especially for Bayonetta, which has, Bayonetta has so much attitude and sass. And I remember playing through Bayonetta 2 literally on an airplane, it took me five hours. The greatest jubilee, the greatest anniversary, the greatest event. I mean, if you look at what jubilee means in a liturgical sense, the Jubilee year, occurring after every seventh Sabbath year, thus every 50 years, is an economic, cultural, environmental, and communal reset when the land and people rest, and all of those who are in slavery are set free to return to their communities. The Jubilee laws are essentially concerned with social relationship, econ economic security, stability, and the well-being of the community. They seek to ensure that people live in ways that reflect good relationships with God, with each other, and with creation. Okay, so theoretically that's a good thing according to this. However, when we listen to this music, we hear this antagonism, we hear these instruments, we hear what we would perceive as something that is good, that in this moment, and in this case, is not good. It is evil. That double meaning is very spicy and very interesting to listen to. I mean, this straight up moves like like Handel or Bach. The organ is descending and the chorus is ascending. And this is moving like absolutely a traditional piece of classical oratorio. It's like unrelenting. I want to pause for 10 seconds and just show you what I mean. Here's me singing in Judas Maccabeus. Not the exact same, but it's a very close, similar structure to what we just heard in the Sopranos. Also, note how the tension's building. It's it's like nonstop. Then it shifts keys. Then we have those drums underneath. That's all about propelling and forward momentum. And there is that like stab quality of real like high stakes stress. Check out this clip from Judas Maccabeus.
But that right there. This. Those are all quick 16th note steps. You see what I mean? That's oratorio. And this is oratorio, but like dialed up to 100 with like a villain quality to it, which is really interesting for someone like me who has sung Handel's Messiah, who has sung Judas Maccabeus, who has been in these choruses where everything is, there's a bunch of rhythms and there's a bunch of 16th notes and there's a ha 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 If you look at every valley, Every valley shall be exalted, shall be exalted. Again, using the sopranos and altos as the two main voices, I'm not hearing any men in this. I've mentioned this in several videos. Sopranos, being that they're higher in the register, that's automatically about faith, about love, about holiness, about purity, about angels, about heaven. When we use men, it tends to be about demons or the devil, at least in like basic structure. It's that's a, that's a generalization, but generally speaking, the celestial voice is almost always a soprano, usually one, but in the case of a chorus, when you have sopranos, it's usually like, oh, we're so innocent. Let us tell you the story of XYZ character in the Bible or whatever. It's really interesting to hear this in this context. Uh, let's, I don't know where I stopped because it's unrelenting. Yeah, sorry, that melody right there. That sounds like something you could hear anywhere in, in terms of liturgical writing. It's written in like a faux liturgical way, which is really fascinating to me. Do you hear the resolution? That resolves, it, well, that wasn't a resolution what I just sang, but but it, it resolves in a really interesting way that is very mm, uh, tonal and, and moves very efficiently. And it's a typical, you know, five, four, one sort of pattern. I don't know the exact notes in this case, but like it, it's very uh, traditional in its writing, even though it's extremely advanced and interesting. Technically, this is contemporary Baroque writing. It's neo-Baroque, you could ar easily argue. And that's the thing that I'm always trying to advocate on this channel channel is that this music is an evolution of what has come before and we really need to pay attention like there's no reason why this can't play in a symphony hall there really isn't Look at how the organ is doubling the Sopranos. And then, now we got two.
Yeah, that's intense. That's really intense and really cool. And that is what is possible when we have composers that are studied and educated and understand what's come before and how you take a sound quality, flip it on its head story-wise and create something that is nefarious and fearful sounding, but has the structure of classical music and Baroque music that has come before that was exclusively positive and exclusively highlighting the goodness of God or or whatever. So, you know, yes, this was episode was a bit religious based, but we have to understand that like liturgical music is a, a is a huge part of classical musical literature and the greatest jubilee and bayonetta for obvious reasons based on story beats will borrow heavily from that stuff. So it's extremely cool. If you like this sort of stuff, feel free to like, subscribe. There's links in the about section if you want to support the channel. Never any pressure. And as always, thanks a ton and I will talk to you later.